What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is Dad Bod here with some more Bloodborne for you. So, if you're watching this, you may be familiar with my full uh, Bloodborne walkthrough that I did some time ago that takes you through pretty much the whole uh, main game backwards and forwards, including the DLC. Um, now, what that didn't include were these two trophies that are left over that require you to go through the Chalice Dungeons. Um, so that's what this this uh, series of videos is going to cover. Uh, so there are actually two ways of going about this. I cover another way, another method in a different video of mine that, you know, through the years, some uh, quicker uh, methods to get those two trophies that don't involve going through all of these dungeons have come about. And so that covers the quick method. This is the full method that requires going through all of the uh, the main chalices that the, the developers kind of intended you to go through to get these trophies. So if you want the full experience, this is where you're going to get that. Uh, this is going to be the walkthrough through those chalices that shows you uh, what you need to do through each of those main chalices. So we're going to have ourselves some good fun. Um, how we're going to start this off, though, is um, I'm going to show you a quick way to level up. Some of the later chalices are quite difficult, and uh, you might find you wanting some new levels. So before we start going through the chalices proper, I'm going to show you a quick way to level up. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to be have to play online. So you, in order, if, if you want to use this method of, of farming for Blood Echoes that I'm about to show you, you will have to be playing online, which I do believe requires a PlayStation Plus account. If you don't already have one, if you've never signed up for PlayStation Plus, I believe you can uh, do a free trial, and it may or may not be worth it. I mean, there's tons of ways to farm for for Blood Echoes in this game, but this is by far the easiest and quickest way that I know of, at least. So what we're going to do is this this method requires using what's called a, a glyph, a chalice glyph. And the only way to use these chalice glyphs is to be playing online. Um, and so uh, you'll, if, if you're playing offline, you'll notice that these two options, the chalice dungeon search and search by chalice glyph options are going to be grayed out. Um, so this leveling up method requires using a chalice glyph. And what you're gonna do is when this little uh, menu pops up, you're gonna wanna type in glyph C U M M M F, P, K, and that's going to unlock this uh, chalice dungeon. So the way the chalices work is I think there's theoretically an infinite number of permutations of chalice dungeons. And so, you know, various folks out there in the Bloodborne community have done an enormous amount of work um, kind of figuring out all of these different dungeons and what is inside of them. And so uh, what these glyphs do is it warps you to a specific one of those instances that someone else has come across or someone else has had a hand in, in making somehow. I, I honestly have no idea how these uh, how, how these dungeons are, are actually formed. But long story short, the glyph gets you here. So as long as you type in that exact glyph, you will find yourself in this very dungeon. And the way to farm is you simply walk forward through this door and look at the wall here. You notice that there's an enemy taking damage there. Um, it's actually, I believe, an NPC hunter that is taking uh, environmental damage. I think there's there's some form of trap that he's fallen into. And you just notice, I just picked up 83,489 blood echoes for doing nothing. You can simply use a bold hunter's mark and you'll warp yourself back to uh, the, the lantern that we were just at. And you can rinse and repeat this as many times as you'd like. Um, even better is if you have the three moon runes, which you would have if you followed uh, my walkthrough, um, you can equip those three moon runes and you'll get even more blood echoes every single time you go through this, I guess you could call it loop. I think if you have all three of them equipped, you're gonna be getting over 100,000 each time. Um, I don't have any of the moon runes equipped right now, but uh, if, if you did, you'd be getting more Blood Echoes for each each time. So that is the best way uh, to level up, I would say, bar none in the game. Um, as I said, it does require being online because you do have to use this Chalice Glyph to get here. Um, so that is just something I wanted to show you because you may find that as you get into the later Chalices, it's getting really difficult. And you may just want to go and farm for some quick levels. So that is just a heads up uh, if you find yourself in a pinch and you want to get some extra levels and, and, and power up a bit. Um, so that said, I'm going to go ahead and exit because the rest of everything that I'm going to be doing is offline. Um, so, you know, the, the proper route through the Chalice Dungeons is, can be done offline. Now, if you want to follow the quick route, as I mentioned before, uh, that I have uh, laid out in another video, all of that is done online. The way that you do the quick, quick route is by using some of those Chalice Glyphs like I just showed you. Now, the base route, the full route, does not require any Glyphs. Everything that is required for those two extra trophies is... 
um, built in to the main game and can be done completely offline. So I'm going to show you that. So whether you just uh, want the full experience for yourself um, or if you're a glutton for punishment, whatever the case may be, and you want to fight some pretty tough bosses that can't be found in the main game, this is going to be the way to do it. So the way that the Chalice Dungeons work is you have these altars. You may have noticed them off to the side during your playthrough, and if you you know didn't experiment at all with the Chalice Dungeons, you pretty much just passed by these every time and didn't mess with them. But now is the time for us to mess with them. So um, you may have noticed uh, when we fought certain bosses in the main game, um, some of them drop chalices. So we can go back here and look at the chalices that we have. If you followed my walkthrough to the T, you would have all of these chalices. You'd have the Thumeru chalice from killing the blood-starved beast. You'd have the ailing Loran chalice from killing Amygdala. And you'd have the great Iz chalice from killing um, Ibratas. So um, the main chalice route to get these last two trophies are going to take us through the, th through the Thumeru chalice and uh, part of the Ailing Loran Chalice. We're actually not even going to touch the Great Is Chalice. Um, you know, th th this is not intended to be a walkthrough that covers the Chalice Dungeons uh, extensively or thoroughly. I mean, that could take a forever to do, honestly, because I mean, well, not through, through these main chalices, you know, there, there's, there are a finite amount, but um, our main focus in this very video series is how are we going to get those extra two trophies for those of you who want to get platinum? Um, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to, to uh, belabor the, the, the point at all. I'm not gonna, going to go through these Chalice Dungeons um, more than what we need to do to get those trophies, because that could take a long time, and uh, you know that's just not, not the purpose of what we're doing here. Um, so one thing I want to point out is uh, I recommend doing this in New Game Plus. Um, the reason being is because unlike the rest of the game, and that's including the DLC, um, the Chalice Dungeons do not scale up in difficulty through the various New Game Plus cycles. So the Chalice Dungeons are going to be the exact same difficulty as they were in base game, and they're going to be the exact same difficulty if you're in New Game Plus 7. Um, and the reason why I say play in New Game Plus is because there's going to be some um, items for sale in the Insight Shop that we're going to need to pick up a little bit later um, that aren't available unless you're in New Game Plus. The other reason why I say we should you should be a new game plus is because if you remember in my uh, in my uh, main game walkthrough, we picked up an item in the lecture hall called Red Jelly. Um, you only get two of them per playthrough. Uh, there is a chalice dungeon that we're going to unlock that requires four of them. So that would mean you get the two of them in the base game, in base new game, and then you're going to circle back and you're going to get two more in new game plus for your total of four. Now, the only other way that I know of at least to get red jelly is to um, is to get them. There, there is a way to there. There is a way to get them in the greater is chalice. Um, but as I said, we're not going to cover the greater is chalice in this in this game or in this walkthrough rather, because it doesn't directly relate to getting these trophies. But um, if, if you for whatever reason do not want to go through to new game plus, um, as I would recommend, uh, there is another way to get those red jellies and the greater is chalice, but again, I'm not going to be covering that in this walkthrough. Again, I do suggest getting your four red jellies by getting the two in the lecture hall and your base new game, and then getting two more new game plus. Um, or if you missed it in your base new game and you're already in new game plus, get the two in new game plus, and then go to new game plus plus to get two more. Um, I think that's even quicker actually than, than going through the greater is chalice, because I do believe you have to go fairly deep into the greater is chalice uh, to get those red jellies as well. Um, so with all that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and perform our first ritual. So if you remember, uh, I, I, I created this glyph um, just to show you that leveling up method. So I'm actually going to remove this chalice here. And then um, actually before we go into it, I'm just going to pull up my stats real quick so you can see. I'm actually level 200. Um, I did level up using that method I showed you before um, earlier in the video. Uh, level 200, some would say, is a bit overkill. And I would agree, you know, it's, it's just to make it a little bit easier for me uh, for just for the purposes of these videos. You definitely do not have to be level 200 to do this, um, but you can see my stats right there. And you'll notice that uh, we're going to perform this first chalice ritual here. So basically what, what, what performing the, the chalice ritual does is uh, you have to have the chalice in order to perform the ritual. So as I said, you get this chalice after beating the Bloodstarved Beast. Um, so you have to, in order to perform the ritual, you have to have the chalice. And you also have to have the materials to perform the rituals. So you'll see in that middle panel there, you need a thousand blood echoes and two ritual blood ones. Um, you should have picked up the two ritual blood ones in that cathedral just before fighting the blood starved beast. So if you followed my walkthrough, you would have them already. And so we have the uh, the requisite materials so we can conduct the ritual. 
And so we have unlocked the chalice. Um, and so you can see we can pull up this menu and we can warp to uh, to the first chamber here. So um, let's just say if you did not have those ritual blood uh, tier ones, you can actually go over here and buy them. Um, so here you can see you can buy the ritual blood ones for 2,500 a piece. So if for whatever reason you do not actually have them, uh, don't fret. You can just go over here and pick up a couple pretty easily and you can perform your ritual just like that. Um, so we're going to warp here to the chamber of the seal. And so the way that these chalices are laid out is they're kind of broken out into layers. So each chalice has at least three layers. Um, every layer has a door that leads to a boss, and then of course a boss. Um, that door that leads to the boss is going to be locked. So every layer has a switch that unlocks the door. And also every layer has, you know, uh, various side paths that lead to loot and things like that. And also located within the chalice are the materials that you're going to need to unlock the next chalice. So going through this uh, whole ordeal, we're going to go through a total of five different chalices. Um, so every chalice dungeon that we enter is going to have the materials that we need for the next chalice. So, um, you know, as you go through these chalice dungeons, you're going to notice that it, it is pretty repetitive. Each of the chalices within the Thumeru chalice are going to have the same general kind of look and feel to them. Um, the rooms are going to be a bit different. Uh, the loot's going to be a bit different. The enemies might be a bit different, but it's going to be the same general ordeal over and over and over again. So, uh, you know, some would say, I, I would even say that these do get repetitive if you're doing them just kind of freehand, I guess if you call it that way, without following a walkthrough. Uh, my first time through these dungeons, it took me about... 10, maybe 15 hours to go all the way through this dungeon, all the way through these dungeons, going through every, you know, door, finding every piece of loot and all that stuff. So really what I'm going to be doing in this is I'm not going to focus on hitting every single dark corner of every chalice dungeon. Really what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be following the critical path, following the uh, path to unlock those doors, as I said, to pull those switches following the path to get the loot that we need, the materials that we need for the next dungeons, and then fighting the bosses, of course. So if you wanted to fully explore these dungeons, um, knock your socks off. You can do it if you want to. Just know that you're going to feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over again for at least 10 hours, I would say. So the way that we're going to be doing this now, it should take probably two and a half to three hours, and that guy likes to throw a knife at you, so you can try to roll through it. Uh, I got hit by it. Um, so you want to go across that bridge, um, and up here there's a Bell Maiden. And so you want to kill her, because it takes away these grotesque, bloody-looking fellas. Um, and that guy is not summoned by the Bell Maiden, so they're, they're still going to be here, even though we killed the Bell Maiden. And so here's the guy, you see this, that, that's the switch back there, and here's, here's the, uh, what I call the Guardian of the switch. So if you kill these Guardians, the, the larger, these large guys, um, they oftentimes do drop materials for the next, that you'll need for the next dungeon. Not always, but sometimes they do. You see there we got Quicksilver Bullets, but sometimes uh, that guy's totally just trolled me. Um, I'm going to equip some antidotes um, while I was talking. He, he, whatever. Anyway, so sometimes they will drop the ritual blood that you need for the next dungeon, but it is a random drop. Um, for the most part, we're going to get all of the ritual blood that we need via pickup, so we're not going to really need to rely on RNG too much. Um, but just so you know, sometimes they do drop the ritual blood that you need for the next uh, chalice. So we just pulled the lever. It says somewhere a door is open. Um, and so I'm going to show you what that's all about. And so you see it. We came in through here off the top of the bridge. You drop down here. You see there's a bag man. And uh, I'm probably just going to one shot him. Yeah. Because as I said, the, the, the chalices uh, get progressively harder. So we are in the easiest chalice. And, you know, as I said, there are some side paths here. You can, this is not part of what I call the critical path, but in this room, you see there's a bunch of rats. You can kill these rats, pick up that loot, etc. There's There's a bunch of places you can go off to the side that you don't need to go. Um, but I'm just showing you an example of, of what that could be. Because um, for the most part, as I said, we're just going to be making a, a beeline to the rooms that we need to go to and, um, and, and doing it that way. So where we want to go is up this ladder. And you'll see this is what a boss door looks like. So um, you'll see it's glow. These lanterns are glowing blue. That means that it's unlocked. If they were glowing purple, that would mean that, that it's locked. So since it's unlocked, we can open this door. Um, and directly ahead of us is the first boss. And we are just going to have our way with this boss. Like this is going to be a joke, especially if, you've, if your character is leveled similarly to mine. Um, this boss is going to be just a complete pushover. 
See, look at this. Look at this damage I'm doing to him. I mean, yeah. So that's the first boss of the Chalice Dungeons. So the way that the Chalice Dungeons, I think, were intended to be approached is, as I mentioned, you get this first one if you're killing the Blood Starved Beast. So I think, I think the developers kind of intended you to sort of explore this first Chalice Dungeon around that point of the game. Um, and then the, uh, you know, a a as we get through this Chalice, we're going to get more chalices that take us deeper. So, um, so th as I said, this chalice is going to have three layers. And then after the third layer, we get the next chalice. And then that chalice has three layers. And so the chalices do get progressively harder. This first chalice is, I think, is meant to be kind of explored earlier on in the game than we're exploring it. Um, so that's why the enemies seem so easy. But uh, do not let your guard down because it's not always going to be this way. Some of the later chalices, uh, I can't emphasize enough how difficult they are. So anyway, so we're in layer two now. So I'm going to go ahead and light this lamp. Um, one thing I want to point out is I do have a hefty supply of Bold Hunter's Marks. Um, if you do not have a lot of Bold Hunter's Marks, I would recommend warping back to the Hunter's Dream right now and picking up a bunch because we are going to be using a lot, a lot of Bold Hunter's Marks because um, when some, some of the materials that we get and some of the switches that we flip, etc., are going to be at dead ends. And really the quickest way to navigate once you reach one of those dead ends sometimes is just to use a bold hunter's mark. For example, the boss doors you'll find are almost always at the beginning of a layer. So you'll see here, um, where is it? Yeah, there. They're on the on the on, on, on this layer. You see the boss door is right there. I mean, it, the, the boss doors are pretty much at the beginning of the layer. So for example, if you go all the way through to pull the switch, really the, the quickest way to get to the boss door is to then just use a bold hunter's mark back to this lantern where you're just then right next to the boss door. Um, so in this in this layer, watch out for that switch right there. If you step on it, a bunch of enemies are going to appear. So you can just walk right by it and, and you can skip fighting the enemies. Um, so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to go up this ladder here. And then there's going to be a room off to the side. And so what I'll, I'll show you an example of a branching path. So the room where we're going is straight ahead right here, but you could also go across this bridge and go to that room. So, um, you know, there, there's there's... Whoops, I just fell down. There, there's there's a lot of ways that you can go uh, go about navigating through these dungeons. And as I said, my goal with these videos is to show you, I guess, the critical path. Um, and if you want to explore these to your heart's content, by all means, be my guest. But um, it is by no means required to do more than what I'm showing you. So I'm going to go through here. Um, there's a bell maiden in here that I'm going to kill. And as, and as you can see, these enemies are are ridiculously weak, um, you know, but get your licks in while you can, because it ain't always going to be this easy. And this guy, this is the, the guardian of the switch. And I'm, I'm just playing a little bit sloppy because I know that I'm way overpowered and he did not drop any ritual blood, but if he doesn't perfectly okay. So we're going to pull the switch. Um, and then Instead of using a bold hunter's mark, we're actually going to backtrack just a tad because um, there's another door that we're going to need to take to get us some materials for the next dungeon. So as I said, this route that I'm showing you is going to get you all the levers that you need to pull, all the bosses that you need to fight, and all the materials that you need um, to get the trophies required uh, for platinum. So if you followed my guide, you'd be missing two trophies. You'd be missing the trophy for killing the uh, uh, Queen Yarnum. And you'd also be missing the, the trophies for um, all weapons. And so at the end of these Chalice Dungeons, we're going to fight Queen Yarnum, which is going to get you that trophy. And then, and then there's a different Chalice Dungeon that's going to give us the last weapon that we need for the all weapons trophy. All right. Uh, so we're going to go through here. And then down these stairs... And sometimes the Bagmans will have the, the Ritual Blood as well. So in that chest is the Ritual Blood Tier 2. And he dropped the Ritual Blood Tier 2 as well. So sometimes the Bagmans do drop the Ritual Blood. Not always, but sometimes they do. So I'm going to get rid of these guys. I'm just going to pop over here and we use a Bold Hunter's Mark. Because we've unlocked the boss door... And we've gotten the uh, the ritual blood that we need from this chalice. And so now it's just time to go fight the boss, which the second boss, and I'll just show you what happens if you if you step on this switch, pops up a bunch of enemies. So, you know, nothing too horrible, but you can avoid it. Why not avoid it? 
So uh, this this boss is is, is not going to be very difficult either. These uh, first chalice bosses are, are are really all pretty easy. So, and here we have the Watchers. Um, they're 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 I guess those what I call the Switch Guardians. There's just three of them. So you do a charge attack, and that almost killed him. So a charge attack and one and one normal hit will kill these guys. Oops, I missed. I whiffed, but it's all good. So I can ju I'm just hitting these guys with normal attacks, and yeah. So that's 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 the second boss. Um, obviously, this would be a lot more challenging if you came in here uh, earlier in the game, but here we are at level 200. And uh, as I said, it ain't always going to be this easy, so don't get used to it. So now we're headed to layer three, which is the third and final layer of this chalice. And you'll see what I mean when we kill this layer three boss. We'll get the next chalice, and you'll see what I mean by, you know, the... The, uh, the the progression through these dungeons because you know you beat one of the chalices you get the next chalice that you need to perform the next ritual and so on and so forth to get to the last one where you fight Queen Yarnum. Um, all right, so we're in layer three now, and I'm going to light this lantern. Um, another thing that I would recommend, as you see, I kind of have my little hot bar here. I'm going to throw in some blue elixirs. There are points in time where I use blue elixirs just because I'm going to be running past like a huge horde of enemies and I don't feel like messing with them or being noticed as much by them. Um, but anyway, so we're going to drop down this hole in the middle and head to the left. And we're going to be in this large grassy area. Um, and to the right, we're going to have this stairwell that we can go up. And we're going to go up the stairs, and there's going to be a Bell Maiden up here that we're going to kill. Um, where is she? There she is. And that'll get rid of a lot of the enemies around here. So there are two pickups that we're concerned about of Ritual Blood 2. So we just got one of those, and the second one is over here. So we got the two Ritual Blood pickups. Um, so now... We're going to go through here and open this door. And the uh, the lever is going to be back here. And again, you can kill this guy. He might drop a Ritual Blood 2. You're not going to need it because we're going to get enough Ritual Blood 2s uh, just through the loot that we pick up. He gave us Blood Vials, but it's all good. Uh, sometimes you might get the ritual blood. So, so these these uh, guardian dudes, the watchers, I guess they're called officially, and the bagmen can sometimes drop the ritual blood that you need for the next chalice. So, we're at a dead end. You know what the you know the drill, bold hunter's mark. Um, so we're gonna work back to the to the lantern at the beginning, and this time we're gonna stay up top. We're not gonna drop down uh, to the bottom. So we're gonna stay up top, and we're gonna go through the boss door here. And so, you may notice, we just went through the boss door, and the boss room is going to be directly ahead of us down through that archway. However, some of the boss doors have side paths behind them. And so, in some cases, we're just going to skip those side paths and run straight to the boss. In this case, we are going to go down the side path because there's some loot that we need um, through this door. There's some ritual blood twos down the way. So, we're going to go up this ladder here. And go through here. And I'm going to run straight past this bag, man. You can kill him if you feel like you want the, the ritual blood. Um, so in here, there's going to be a door on the right that we're going to go inside. We're going to go straight through this next door. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm really just running past most of these enemies. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this in a timely fashion. Um, and so, another stairway, another chest, another guardian dude. This one's with a gun. So in here, we're going to get ourselves some more ritual blood. And we should have, that's, there's four of them in there, and we should have enough now for the, uh, for the next, um, for the next dungeon. So, Bold Hunter's Mark back to the beginning, and now we're just going to fight the boss, who's going to be a called a, a watchdog of the old lords. So, uh, 
you have may or I'm sure you've noticed by now that there are bosses in the Chalice Dungeons that are not in the main game. So some of these bosses in the Chalice Dungeons are indeed exclusive to the Chalice Dungeons. Um, so it add, you know, there's a little bit of extra variety if you decide to uh, to take this upon uh, yourself here to go through all of the Chalice Dungeons. And so you, you, you get rewarded with fighting some new bosses and, you know, seeing some new stuff and that sort of thing. So it's pretty cool. So... This is the Watchdog of the Old Lords. This is the first of two that we're gonna fight. Don't get used to how easy this one is because we're leveled so high. The next one that we fight, a case can be made that it's the hardest boss of all of the Chalice Dungeons. So you can see I'm just totally destroying this guy. Um, in fact, I would say don't kill this guy right away. Try to learn his move set <laughs> a little bit while you know you're way stronger than he is. You see, I'm, I'm dodging through his attacks and whatnot, and you know, you want you're, you're gonna want to know his moves because when you fight him for real, uh, you're gonna want to know him a bit better. Um, we'll just leave it at that because, as I said, it's probably the hardest boss of all the Chalice Dungeons. So, you might want to just take a few minutes, kind of get familiar with his moves. His move set changes uh, it, when he gets to you know half HP or one third HP. So play around with that as well, and you'll thank me later, believe me. So you'll see, we just got the central. Thumaru Chalice. So that is the next chalice that we're going to need to unlock to carry forward with our journey. And um, we're going to need to be using those Ritual Blood 2s that we've been picking up in this chalice to unlock that chalice. So, um, as I said, you can explore these way more thoroughly in your own playthrough. I got bored with exploring these things pretty quickly because, as I said, as I said it is very repetitive to be doing these over and over and over again. You'll see when we get to the central Thumaru chalice that it looks, you know, strikingly similar to the one we just did. And, you know, there's a few more of them where that came from even. So, uh, as I said, feel free to do it, but um, it is by no means necessary to thoroughly explore them uh, to do what we are setting out to do right now. So. Congratulations, you just beat your first Chalice Dungeon. And so, uh, we, as I said, we got the next one uh, unlocked. So, why not? We'll go on and do it. Um, let's perform the ritual. And so, you'll see that we have the Thumeru Root Chalice, and we also have the Central Thumeru Chalice. The Root Chalice, I believe, is how you get some of those, like, kind of randomly generated ones. Um, but using these, like, predefined ones, this is uh, these are all the ones that... Um, are always going to be the same. So uh, you can see here, um, you see this 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 icon that has the three lines on the left before it says Thumeru. Uh, and you see this one has a one, this one has a two. So that represents the quote unquote depth. So the higher the depth, the higher that number is, the greater the difficulty of that chalice dungeon. So you'll see this one's a depth one. The next one we're going to is a depth two. So it is a bit more uh, difficult. And we have our six um, ritual bloods. Um, if you find that you uh, do not have six, as I said, you can go back and you can farm some of those dudes at the switch and you can um, get yourself another one if you need. Um, I don't believe they're unlocked at the shop. I'm just gonna check real quick. Yeah, we don't have them at the shop yet, so. Um, so you may, you may need, if you find, if you find that you, you're lacking one, you might need to go back and farm those guys, uh, farm those guys, um, that, uh, drop them by the switches. So we need six. I believe, I'm going to check my inventory. I believe we have more than six. Um, yeah, so doing that, we have nine. So you, you should have more than enough if you did what I just did, so. But anyway, six is the requirement. And you'll see how here, here on the screen it shows that we have nine and what's required is six. So we're gonna we're going to do the ritual for this next dungeon here. And uh, this one will be a little bit more difficult, but still relatively easy. Uh, we're we're I don't think we're gonna get to like the truly chalice challenging chalice dungeons until we get to like the fourth one, and you'll see what I mean. Um, yeah. Okay, so, Central Thumeru, Layer 1. All right, let's go through this big door here. And was, was there, so, sometimes there are doors off to the side before you open this door, but not in this case. 
So I'm going to light the lantern because this is going to be the lantern that we work back to when we use a bold hunter's mark. Um, so we're going to turn right in this room. And then we're going to go up the stairs, kill the bell maiden. Oh, I just got molotov But it's all good because these enemies are still... They're still weak. Where's the guy that was throwing them at me? And you don't have to kill all these guys, of course, but whatever. All right. So, uh... This guy getting up off the floor. Some of, some of these chalices do have traps. Um, and we'll, we'll get to those, uh, you know, when we get there. Oop, I just got snuck up on from behind, but it's all good. Uh, so in this room, we're going to go to the left through this door. Just going to run past the bag man, but he, he might, uh, drops. Well, he might drop ritual blood. So why not? Why not kill him? He's still going to be easy. Uh, just to show you up oh, bloodstone shards. It's all good. The, the, the ritual blood drops are relatively rare, but uh, they are quite nice if you get them. So here's the the Watcher. They can be parried and visceraled. Oh, come on. Let's see if he drops one. Nope. All right, pull the switch. And we're going to warp back. And then um, there's really no uh, materials for us to farm in this layer, so we are just going to go straight to the boss. Who's over here? Yeah, see, there's there's a trap. You know that guy breaks with the coffin. There's there's some of you're gonna notice some of those throughout the chalice dungeons where enemies bust through walls or through coffins or there are some like there, there's like guillotine traps in some of them. All sorts of good stuff. So we're gonna fight the beast possessed soul. And this is the first of two that we're gonna fight. This one's gonna be really easy. The second one's gonna be a bit more challenging, but not not too bad. Um, think about these guys as they have some nasty combos that you can get caught get yourself caught up in. Um, the second one's gonna be gonna be more difficult than this one, obviously, but still not nearly as difficult as the uh, the next watchdog that we're gonna fight. Which the next watchdog that we fight comes actually a, a quite a bit later but um the next one of those that we fight uh won't be as hard as that but it'll be harder than what we just uh what we just did so all right just like that we're down to layer two so i mentioned before that sometimes you get a side door even before the lantern this is one of those cases um, I'm going to light the lantern first, but then we're actually going to come back to that door and go through it because there's some stuff that we need in there. So I'm going to light the lantern so we can use it as a bold hunter's mark point. Um, and then we're going to go back and actually go through this door. So we're going to head uh, to our left once we go through here. Oops. I'm going to go through this door here on the left. And then we're going to turn again to our left and go through this archway. And beware, there's a guy up the ceiling. He'll drop on you and grab you and hurt you. So just kind of run to the side if you can to avoid the, the grab attack. So we want to go up this ladder. And then we want to go... Uh, through this door here. And then this chest here has us some Ritual Blood 3. So that's why we kind of made this this trek. We wanted the Ritual Blood 3, and there's three of them, so that ain't bad. So we're going to use a Bold Hunter's Mark to get out of here. Oh, come on. What a freaking pain. Oh, and there's a bag man. All right, maybe he'll give us another Ritual Blood 3. Nope. All right, Bold Hunter's Mark. Let's get out of here. And then uh, we're going to proceed straight this time. 
Just avoid all these enemies and their poison darts. All right, so we're going to go up the ladder. You might remember a room that looked exactly like this in the last chalice dungeon that we did. Um, and we're going to go through... Oh, these, these things can be annoying. Uh, we're going to go through this... Uh, through this door. We're going to hang a right. Go down the stairs, and there be our switch for this layer. No Ritual Blood 3. As you can tell, the drops are pretty rare for the Ritual Blood. Fortunately, though, we get enough pickups that we don't really need the drops for the most part. We definitely do not need any drops in this particular dungeon. There are There is a dungeon later where we where we need precisely at least one drop. Okay, so now we are off to the boss. Oops, that's not the door we want. There we go. So this boss is a Keeper of the Old Lords. Um, there's at least one more of these that we're going to fight later. Um, I will show you the trick to beating them. The, the really, really the best way to beat them is by using visceral attacks. Um, and there are two attacks that you can pretty easily punish. You're not going to need to do it with this one, but you're probably going to need to do it with the next one. So they blow fire at you. Uh, there's an attack where she'll swing her sword twice, and she'll, there's that one where she'll like scoop her sword on the ground and run up to you. Um, that's the one where she swings it, swings it twice, and um, I'll show you how to parry each of them. So, let's see. Nope, that's not what I want. That's not what I want. Come on. So there's the there's the one where she swings her sword twice. If you if you shoot her in the middle of her of that animation, if if you swing her kind of in the middle of those two swings, you'll get the parry. And then I'm gonna show you the other one where she scoops up her sword kind of towards you. Come on, do it. Do it. And again, definitely not needed during this fight. I'm just showing you so you know for for later because it is a bit more crucial later. Um. Ah. All right, just give me the other one that I can punish. Normally, she does them more uh, more frequently, but there it is. So that one you can parry as well. Um, so one thing about her is, is once you get her down to, we'll say, probably two-thirds to halfway health, she's going to try to imbue her sword with fire. Do not let her do that. You can you can interrupt her, I guess you can call it her transform to phase two just by shooting her with a quicksilver bullet. Do not let her do it because then all of her normal attacks with her sword uh, have fire and the fire has range. That's her doing it. And I actually, I, I let her get it off. So you see her sword has fire on it now. And any times that she swings her sword, she's going to throw fire at you. Um, it's much easier to do when I'm, when I'm not talking. So you see now she throws fire with her sword. Um, so she gets quite a bit more difficult. But fortunately, this is the first time they fought her, so it's not as big of a deal. Um, I can kind of just manhandle her until she's dead. But next time, we will not be so fortunate. But next time, next time, um, I, I generally keep pretty close uh, proximity to her when I'm fighting her for real and I'm not talking during it. Um, and she, she does typically give me more of those, like, double swings that you can parry. Um, she gives me those much more frequently than I was uh, seeing there uh, for the most part. But as I said, once you see her kind of reach for her sword with her other hand, that's when she she's going to put the fire on it. You want to shoot her right away when you see that, because if you shoot her quick enough, you will actually interrupt her from transforming. But the thing is, is once you interrupt her, whoops, I went, I went backwards. Once you interrupt her, um, she will try to do it over and over again. So you still have to keep doing it uh, to, keep her from pro to, to keep her from transforming to that second phase, because especially the next time that we fight her, or I, I can't remember if we fight three of them or two of them, but in the last one that we fight, you're definitely going to want to keep her out of that second phase as best as you can because the damage that she does is way higher and it becomes a problem. Um, but I just wanted to take that time to showcase her move set, and I'm probably going to do the same thing next time too. But you know, just just to give you the opportunity for you to learn the moves yourself. Um, so this is another one where there's a side door here. Uh, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to unlock this lantern here first. So I have a bold hunter's mark point to warp to. And now we're going to backtrack, go through this door here. So I mentioned there's traps. 
this would be one of them. So there's a switch right down there where if you hit it, this thing's going to fire an arrow at you. So you can actually kill the trap first. And so now if you step on the switch, nothing's going to happen to you. All right. So we're going to go to the left here. And in here, there's a treasure chest that has Ritual Blood 3. This guy's going to try to beat me down. So, whatever. We got a Ritual Blood 3. Um, so this next room down here has boulders rolling down. So you're going to want to watch out for the boulders. So I'm going to wait for the next one to go down. There we go. Just kind of follow the path of the boulder. And there's a spot for you to run off to the side here. And this is going to be our first treasure room. So there are several rooms in the Chalice Dungeons that are what I call treasure rooms. Basically rooms that are just filled with a bunch of different treasure chests. You know, there's going to be enemies in them. But, uh... You can choose to take them out or not, up to you. Um, so actually in this uh, treasure room, the first chest to the left is going to have some Ritual Blood 3 for us. And, um, you know, this is a treasure room, so there's lots of treasure in here. Um, feel free to get everything uh, to your heart's content. You don't need anything else than that Ritual Blood 3, but just showing you an example of what else is in here. So a Sage's Wrist, that's going to be something that would be needed for a different chalice that we're not going to cover, so we don't really need that. And Tomb Mold, same for that. So just an example. The only one you need to get is the one over there with the uh, with the Ritual Blood 3 in it. So um, we're going to use a Bold Hunter's Mark and get back to our Lamp. And then we are going to carry on, and our next mission is going to be to pull the lever. So uh, we're going to go all the way to the back of this room, to this ladder back here. Oops, so we go. there we go, other side. And then here, there's going to be a door in the back, kind of, no, not, not all the way back, halfway through, on the left. And then in here, we're going to hang a right. There's going to be a maiden in here that we're going to kill. And here's our switch. So we got our switch, use another Bold Hunter's Mark. As I said, uh, we're going to be using lots of Bold Hunter's Marks. And so our next mission is going to be to fight the boss. And that boss is known as the Thumerian Descendant. Um, and this is the first of two that we're going to fight. This, the, the second one, again, is ridiculously hard. Um, but this one, not so much. But as I did with the uh, with the last boss that we fight, I'm gonna I'm gonna showcase kind of the move set, at least as best as I can, and hopefully not die in the process to a boss that is relatively easy to kill. So this boss, the thing about him is he moves really, really, really fast. Um, he does have attacks that you can punish though. Parries and viscerals are the way that I get him. In his first phase, well, the thing is his attacks are quick and he has nasty combos. The the, the attack that you're gonna want to look for, he's gonna stick out his arm ever so slightly in front of you. And uh, he does have long range attacks too, so he can throw his, his weapon at you as well. So watch out for that. I mean, he sticks out his arm ever so slightly, and then um, you want to wait for him to pull it back, and then he'll raise his weapon above his head. That's when you want to shoot your gun, is when he raises his weapon above his head. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. Hopefully he'll do it. He, he, his other attacks are parryable as well, but there, there's, there it is. See how he raised his weapon above his head? And, and I, I, I did the, uh, the bullet a little bit too late, 
And I did, I did enough damage, he's in his second form now. So he's not going to do that attack anymore. Um, his other attacks are parryable, but if he's in the middle of a combo, you're not going to parry him if he's already in the middle of a combo. You kind of have to, and he's so quick, you have to anticipate kind of his first shot. And, and you have to time it just right. So um, that was too late. I probably could have parried that one. But, you know, now he's in the middle of a combo, so he's not going to be parried. But uh, you kind of have to anticipate his attack and, and get, the, get the shot just at the right time. That was barely too late. Um, that was too late. Just showing how he can parry his second form. That one you can actually parry as well. Uh... There we go. That that one I shot too early, but that one, that one is probably the, the where, he, where he picks both hooks above his head. That's probably the easiest one to parry. Um, I definitely don't need to parry him here, but I just want to show you that you can. Oh, he's just so fast that it's it's hard to get the timing just right. Ah, uh, there we go. What was that like tenth or fifteenth time is a charm, something like that. Um, but anyway, the, the the next version of this guy that we're gonna fight is, oof, he's a tough guy. So, as I said, use that as your opportunity to learn him, and then that way you'll you'll feel a little bit better prepared for uh, for what's next. So, for beating him. We got our next Chalice. We actually now have the lower Thumeru Chalice, which is a uh, depth of three. And you'll see that we need nine Ritual Blood threes to do the ritual. And we have nine Ritual Blood threes. So I got zero Ritual Blood three pickups in this dungeon. Um, but of course, with the, with the loot that we picked up, we got exactly what we needed. So... We are in good shape. Okay, well, um, I think I'm going to call it right here, guys. So we got through our first two chalices um, that we need to get through. Uh, there are a few more that we need to get through before all is said and done. Um, but uh, it's been good so far. Hopefully you guys have found this helpful. Uh, those of you who are going on the, uh, the, the full chalice dungeon journey with me. By full, I mean, you know, the the uh, number of Chalice Dungeons that the uh, developers intended in order to get the uh, trophies required for Platinum. So um, there are there are definitely more Chalice Dungeons out there that we're not, we're not uh, going to take care of, but uh, these are the ones that you need for the trophies. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and found it useful. And um, I will catch you guys in the next one. So uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. Really appreciate, appreciate you guys watching and have a great day. Adios.